Hey y'all, the next thing that I want to read, and this will close us out really just about Mary and before the birth of Jesus. Well, this is technically after because it's Luke 2, 19. And this is one that you're familiar with. So at the end of the Christmas story, <laughs> um, the angels have appeared to the shepherds. The shepherds come and see the baby. And um, verse 19 says, But Mary was keeping within herself all these sayings, weighing and pondering them in her heart. I read several different translations of that. And it came, comes out as preserving them in her heart, lest they be forgotten. And so, again, Mary knowing that Jesus was to be the Messiah, that he would be the Messiah, as these events were happening and transpiring, she kept them. And she pondered them. And, you know, um, we've talked about meditating on the word, pondering the word by day and by night. So she pondered these things. She treasured them. She kept them, preserving them. I don't know about you. Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, But when he was taken to be arrested, she probably needed those memories, those moments to hold her to keep her and to remind her that yes he's her son but on a much grander scale he is the messiah and so those these words and these confirming things that she received and the events of his birth she kept and she preserved and that to me there are things that i need to keep or preserve. Not that I've given birth to the Messiah, but words spoken over my children, words that I speak over my children, verses that I pray over my children, that I preserve them and that I ponder them and that I treasure them so that in the hard days, I can pull those back out and remind myself, you know, and I don't have to pull them very far. If I've treasured them and I've put them in, then they're not going to be far from my mind. So those are the things early up front about Mary that I, I want to talk about. Now I want to go to John chapter 2. And this is Jesus' first miracle, right? This is where Jesus turns the water into wine. And we're going to look at this for um, just a little bit. It says, On the third day there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding. And when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, which dear was a term of respect and endearment. He wasn't belittling her. It was a term of respect and endearment. He says, Dear woman, what is that to you and me? My time has not yet come. My hour to act has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. And of course, we know the rest of the story that Jesus says, now there were six water pots of stone standing there as the Jewish custom of purification demanded, holding 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. Then he said to them, draw some out and take it to the manager of the feast, to the one presiding, the superintendent of the banquet. So they took him some. And when the manager tasted the water, just now turned into wine, not knowing where he came from, though the servants had drawn the water new, he called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone else serves the best wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the wine, which is not so good. But you have kept back the good wine until now. This... The first of his signs Jesus performed in Cana at Galilee and manifested his glory. By, by it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly. And his disciples believed believed him, believed in him, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on him. Now, we are very familiar with this story, right? We know that this is Jesus' first miracle. It's his first display of, of power. I've always been interested in 
the conversation, you know, the, that exchange between he and Mary up front. And so we're going to dig into that tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.